Good morning, John. Good morning. Today's announcements. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr., First Lady Carita Wallace, and the entire St. John's family, we thank everyone who came out yesterday to the drive-by. Because of you, the day was wonderful. The next men's ministry virtual meeting will be held on Saturday, January 9th from 9 a.m. until 10 a.m. The men are discussing the book, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Men, God's Design for Male Identity by author Dr. Miles Monroe. If you have not yet purchased the book, copies are available at the church. An email will be sent with details for the dial-in information. As we prepare members' contribution statements, we ask if you have recently moved and or had a change of address to please notify the church immediately with your new address so that your statement will be mailed to the proper address. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for weekly prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with gratitude and grace and be blessed by prayer. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312522. Did you know that St. John's is on the radio? That's right. Every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Tap On Radio, 1070 on the AM dial. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's Choir for a spiritual experience you don't want to miss. You can download the Tap On Radio app, click on radio, and click on the broadcast. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Zoom Sunday School. For those who wish to phone in, please dial 646-558-8656. Enter the meeting ID number 876 876- Five zero four two three five one six, and the passcode is 047309. Be sure we have your email address so you are added to the weekly invite. Join St. John's family and friends every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for Zoom Bible study. An email notification will be sent out to all on our distribution list. However, if you do not currently receive notifications from the church, please call or email us your email address so we can add you to the weekly invite. During this time, if you are in need, know that the church is here for you. Please call the church and leave a detailed message and a deacon will be in touch with you. The work of the church continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support to St. John's. Whether your stewardship is online by simple give, mail to the church, or during a drive-by, may God continue to bless you and your family abundantly in 2021. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, Please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. Call the church and leave a message and we will get in touch with you. As we pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray one for another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building may be closed, but the church is still open. Let's all do our part and wash our hands for 20 seconds, wear a mask, and maintain social distance, as we'll all get through this better together. Have a blessed day.
your Bible. You read the story about a blind man who could not see. Thank you, Jesus. One day he heard that Jesus was passing by. He hung his head and cried, lay your hands, lay your hand, lay your hands on me. And this is what he said, I know you can do it.
and welcome to St. John Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Sean T. Wallace, Sr. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we come once again before your throne of grace, thanking you once again for another day's journey. We thank you last night for our lying down and our rising this morning. And Lord, we pray this morning that you would touch as only you can. Guide us, O oh Heavenly Father, that what we do and say is pleasing in your sight. Bless our pastor as he delivered the word this morning that he might lift up some downhearted soul. Bless those, O oh Heavenly Father, that are weak in heart and heart and have things that they're concerned about this morning. Let them know that you have all power and you're able to, to take care of all things. These things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture is coming this morning from Matthew 5. I'm starting at the first verse. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciple came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who moan, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and prosecute you and say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they prosecuted the prophet which were before you. This is the word of the Lord.
let's sing it together. Lord, I will lift you.
let the church say amen. This is the day the Lord have made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Songwriter said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's preaching time. Come on, go with me to the throne of grace. God, we're grateful and we thank you. Thank you for another day's journey that you have brought us. Thank you for how you have blessed us and kept us. Thank you for a new year that, Lord, you've allowed us to see together. 2021. God, we pray that you'll bless our going out and our coming in. We pray that you'll bless us, God, as we do all that we need to do to try to be the people of God that you've called us to be in these last and evil days. Thank you for how you blessed us. Thank you for how you kept us. Thank you for what you keep doing for us. Thank you for the ways you've made for us. And now, God, it's preaching time. Pray that you be pleased with what we do. We pray now, God, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. This is our prayer. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen, amen, and thank God. My brothers and sisters, last week on the last Sunday of 2020, we talked about facing forward, looking forward. We looked at how on the cruise ship of life, we need to have our deck chairs facing forward. We can't afford to face backwards because facing backwards leads to looking back. And looking back will try to get us to go back. And backwards is not progression, it's regression. We also talked about not keeping our deck chairs facing in a position that keeps us in the present, nor leaving our deck chair folded, collapsed, or unused, because either one of those positions can render us stagnant, stationary, inactive, dormant, trapped, and stuck. We concluded that the best thing that we could do is to face forward. But not just facing forward, we shared that we ought to be looking forward. It makes no sense for us to face forward and try to keep looking back or just try to keep looking around because if we continue to do that, then we will never see beyond what we've always seen. And one of the biggest issues that the people of God have in their life is improper exposure. When people don't get the right exposure, it has the ability to affect their development. Some folks will never know that there is more to their life because they've never been exposed to more in life. They've never seen more than what they've already seen. Some folks will remain stuck in their present condition because they haven't been exposed to anything beyond what they're currently in. Some folks will believe that they have to keep repeating that vicious cycle in life because they've never been exposed to anything other than what they're used to seeing, what they're used to feeling, and what they're used to experiencing. So it's imperative for us to look forward while we're facing forward. Because if we don't look forward, then we may never get the opportunity to see beyond what we've seen or what we're currently seeing. We then picked up at watch night by saying that looking forward needs to be done with clear vision. We spent our time sharing that the year 2020 was deliberately designed to get us to look forward with clarity of vision. Our vision needed to be sharpened. It needs to be pure. It needs to be transparent. We need to be able to see what's uh, supposed to be seen. We don't need perfect vision, but what we need is distinct vision and perceptive vision. God needed us to see him more clearly. God needed us to straighten out our focus. God needs us with clear vision because without it, we won't be able to move forward. And my brothers and sisters, after the year that we had in 2020, we need to be moving forward. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. We need to be moving forward. 
Forget those things which are behind and press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. We need to be moving forward. And that's what our theme is for 2021. Facing forward, looking forward, moving forward. And I don't know how you feel about it, but in this new year, I'm facing forward. I'm looking forward so that I can move forward. Today's text offers for us an example of what it means to face forward, look forward, and move forward. 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 through 5 say, Now there were four men who were lepers at the entrance to the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we will surely die. And if we sit here, we die also. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians, but when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. The city of Samaria is suffering. A severe famine has hit the city. Things have gotten seriously desperate. Economic inflation is at an all-time high. The people are in such desperation inside the walls that they've turned to cannibalism. Because of the great famine, there's no food. And because there's no food, people have lost their minds and have turned on one another. The very thing that people said they never do, they end up doing. My brothers and sisters, desperation will cause people to do some crazy things. It'll cause them to act in a way that they said they never act. It'll cause them to say some things that they said they never say. It'll cause them to feel like there's no place else to turn and there's nothing else that can be done. The enemy, the Syrian army, is just outside the city walls. They've surrounded the city of Samaria. They're watching and waiting and are carefully calculating their next move. The, en uh, the enemy has ample provisions. They've got plenty of patience in hopes that those inside the walls will either surrender or die of starvation. The king of Samaria walks along the walls of the city. He sees the despair and desperation and he weeps. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to proceed. He's left feeling hopeless and helpless. Inside the city is a mess. But there's also another drama unfolding on the outside of the city. Verse 3 suggests that there are four men with leprosy at the entrance of the gate. They live in an area immediately outside of the city of Samaria. And because of their condition, they've been shut out of the city. There was no cure for leprosy. And it was considered highly contagious. So anyone with leprosy was forced to live on the outskirts of the town. And when in the presence of people, shout out, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. So that no one would come close enough to contract the disease. They normally be fed by the scraps of garbage that were thrown over the wall. But with the famine and the scarcity of food inside the wall, there was even less on the outside. So here we find these four men dying of leprosy, having an interesting conversation. And you and I just happen to be privy to this conversation that they're having. Walk with me. The first thing I hear from their conversation is a question about their present condition. Listen to them. We already sick. There's no more food. Uh, no more food to nourish us uh, in our sick state. We're going to die eventually. So what sense does it make 
to just sit here until we die. My brothers and sisters, don't miss that. They said, look, we already know that we have a death sentence. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is how shall we live the rest of the life we have to live? Death we know is imminent, but what are we going to do about the life that we still have? Why are we just sitting here until we die? Did y'all miss that? Did y'all read it too fast? Don't miss that nugget. Why are we going to sit here until we die? Yes, we're here. We will die eventually. Yes, we do have a death sentence. But the truth of the matter is we ain't dead yet. Since we're not dead yet, we need to make a decision on the life that we still have to live. In other words, they said, let's focus on the living that we have to do rather than the dying that is inevitably coming. And if I can be honest with you today, my brothers and sisters, many of us have already decided to preoccupy ourselves with the present condition that we find ourselves in as a result of this pandemic. Some folks have made up in their minds, this is it. This is the hand I've been dealt, and this is it. I haven't seen anything more. I won't see anything more. And so I'm just going to sit here on my blessed assurance and give up. I'm just going to allow whatever my present condition is to dictate to me what I will or will not do, what I will or will not try, what efforts I will or will not make. Some folks have already decided to give up. They've thrown in the towel. They've already come to the conclusion that there's nothing that can be done. Unfortunately, they have not taken the time to consider that there are other options than to just sit here until we die. And somebody under the sound of my voice needs to give up that preoccupation with death and consider life's options. Listen to these four lepers as they share with us three options that are before them and are presented to you and I today. Number one, if we go back into the city, there's a famine in the city and we will die there. Number two, if we stay where we are, it's certain that we will die here. Number three, if we go and surrender ourselves to the Syrian army, there's a chance that we might live. Well, let me encourage somebody today that might be stuck between a rock and a hard place that may be spending too much time dwelling on the things being over and not on the life that's yet to live. Number one, don't go back to the city. Why go back into the city when you know that there's a famine there? You see, it would be one thing if you went back because there was food there, there was growth there, there was development there, there was possibility there. But since none of those things exist there, why do you want to go back there? Uh, there, there, There's nothing back there for you. And what I discovered is that it's quite difficult, even impossible, to go forward when you're always trying to go backwards. Every time we try to go back, it hinders our ability to move forward. Somebody needs to know today, when you keep revisiting back there, when you keep leaning on back there, when you keep depending on what's back there, when you keep bringing up what happened back there, when you inundate yourself with what was back there, then you may never get to where you're supposed to be up there because you're trying to stay back there. 2020, my brothers and sisters, is back there. The hurt is back there. That mess is back there. That problem is back there. And back there is where it ought to stay because there's a famine back there. And all the famine is going to do is continue to suck the life out of you because there's nothing there 
for you to feed off of and grow. So please don't go back to the city. Whatever your city is, please don't go back there. Then number two, please don't stay where you are either. Because you already know what your fate is. If you stay where you are, you're going to die. Some people sit here and wallow in the what ifs of their life. I wonder what if I would have done this. I wonder what if I would have done that. What if I would have gone back? What if I would have gone to the camp? What if I would have made a different choice? What if I would have thought that life was worth the living when we stay here and just accept dying? We reject the possibility of a changed life, the possibility of a sustained life, the possibility of a healed life, the possibility of a restored life, the possibility of a renewed life, the possibility of a better life, and the possibility of an abundant life. We can't stay here. And unfortunately, a whole lot of people have made up in their minds that since they're going to die, then they might as well just stay put and die. They might as well just accept their fate and die. They might as well just let it be what it be and accept it as what it is. And so people just get comfortable and complacent right there, right where they are. Put a sign up that says, I shall not be moved. But I stopped by to share with somebody in 2021 that the only logical response is to move forward. These four men said, if we move forward, we may die or we may live. But either way, it's a chance worth taking because the possibility of life beats a definite death any day. The Bible says that in the morning, at twilight, they got up and they moved forward, not knowing what to expect, not knowing what they would have to encounter and what they'd have to deal with, yet they moved forward anyhow. Can I stop right here and share with somebody on this Sunday in January 2021? God does not always tell us exactly where to go. And sometimes God does not always tell us exactly what to do. Sometimes God wants us to use uh, the good sense that he gave us uh, and move forward. Sometimes God wants us to use uh, the wisdom that he, we ask for and move forward. Sometimes God wants us to acknowledge uh, what we know is the right thing to do uh, and move forward. And when we go, uh, and when we go, uh, and when we do, uh, when we exercise the knowledge and wisdom uh, and the understanding that God has given us, uh, we can be assured uh, that God will be with us. Uh, can I tell y'all that's something to shout about right there sometime? Uh, God just wants us uh, to go uh, and know that he'll be with us. Uh, sometimes uh, he wants us to do uh, and know that he'll be with us. Sometimes God just says, uh, use the brain uh, that I gave you. Uh, use the intelligence uh, I put inside you. Make a sound choice uh, while moving forward. Uh, and know that I'll be with you. Uh, for lo, uh, I'm with you always. Uh, even uh, until the end of the world. Uh, and he promised uh, never to leave us. Uh, never to leave us alone. Uh, and here it is. Uh, even when you met up uh, along the way uh, even when you make mistakes uh, on the journey uh, even when you have some missteps and some mishaps uh, since God uh, is with us uh, God can help us uh, to make the necessary changes uh, midstream in our life uh, let me get out of here uh, the Bible 
Bible says uh, that they entered uh, the outskirts of the camp uh, and to their surprise, uh, nobody was there. Uh, they took a chance uh, by moving forward uh, and discover uh, that when they get there, uh, nobody, I said nobody, uh, nobody uh, was there. For the Bible says uh, that the Lord uh, caused the Syrian army uh, to hear a great noise of chariots uh, and the noise of horses uh, and thinking uh, that a large army uh, was upon them. Uh, they got up, left everything uh, and ran for their lives. Uh, can I tell y'all uh, that's the word for the day. Uh, that's the word for the year. Uh, that's how it ought to be. Uh, entering in the 20. Uh, 21 uh, we need to decide this morning uh, to face forward uh, to look forward uh, to move forward uh, knowing that God uh, he's with us uh, and God will uh, take care of us uh, God will make a way uh, God will turn it around uh, God will provide for us uh, and I wonder uh, if there's anybody out there uh, who's willing to take a chance uh, on moving forward uh, and watch God uh, make a way out of no way. Uh, is there anybody? Is there anybody? Uh, is there anybody uh, online uh, that's deciding today uh, to no longer just sit there uh, and decide on not going back, uh, but they decided uh, to face forward, uh, to look forward, uh, and to move forward. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that's saying that 2021 uh, will be the year uh, that I move forward? Uh, don't fool me now. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who's moving forward? Uh, I will not go back. Uh, I will not stay put. Uh, I'm moving forward. It doesn't matter uh, what my present condition is. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, it doesn't matter what I'm going through right now. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, who's against me. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, who's with me or not. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, who's supporting me or not. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, thank you, Israel Hooten uh, and LFC. Uh, they said it this way. Uh, I'm not going back. Uh, I'm moving ahead. Uh, here to declare uh, to you my past uh, is over in you. Uh, oh, things uh, are made new. Uh, Surrender my life uh, to Christ. Uh, I'm moving forward. Uh, and here's the part uh, that resounds in my spirit. Uh, you uh, make uh, all things new. Uh, yes, you make uh, all things new. And I will follow you forward uh, shout yeah the bible says uh, that when they went forward uh, they went into the camp uh, they stopped at one tent uh, they ate and they drank uh, carried out gold and silver uh, they went to another tent and did the same uh, went to another tent uh, and did the same and because uh, they had moved forward uh, God changed what looked like uh, a death sentence uh, into abundant life uh, and because uh, they had moved forward uh, God uh, changed it all around and that's what uh, God does when we move forward uh, he'll change uh, death sentences into abundant life uh, can I testify I was sinking uh, deep in sin uh, far uh, from the peaceful shore uh, very deeply uh, stained within uh, sinking to rise uh, no more uh, but the master of the sea, uh, he heard uh, my despairing cry. Uh, and from the waters, I said from the waters, I said from the waters, uh, he lifted me. Now save, now save, now save. Am I love lifted me, love 
lifted me when nothing else could help. Love, love lifted me. And I'm moving forward. You're moving forward. We need to be moving forward. Watch this, because on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And he died on that rugged cross. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Watch this. Just so that you and I could move forward. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm making sure that in 2021, I'm facing forward. I'm looking forward. I'm moving forward. My prayer is for each and every one of you that you too will face forward. You too will look forward. You too will move forward and watch what God will do. God is in the business of turning death sentences into abundant life. My brother, my sister that might be watching with us today, I don't care what happened in the past. I don't care how bad 2020 might have been. In 2021, I'm looking forward, facing forward, and I'm moving forward. I'm not turning back. I'm going forward with our God. Come on, with every head bowed and every eye closed. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you because you kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves. And then, Lord, you made a way you provided for us to leave 2020 that we might enter into 2021. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for how you have blessed us. Thank you for the way that you made. And God, in response to what you did for us, we're going to promise today that we're not going to keep looking back. We're not going to keep trying to go back. We're not going to keep trying to stay still, but we're going to be moving forward. I pray now that you would touch that man, touch that woman, touch that boy, touch that girl who needs to be encouraged today, God, to move forward. Thank you, thank you for the example of the four lepers who teach us that if we just move forward, that you're in the business of providing for us along the way. So God, we thank you for what you've already done we thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. And Lord, any way you bless us, we'll give you glory. We'll give you praise. We'll give you honor. Touch now, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. This is our prayer. We pray it now in Jesus' name. The only name that matters. Let every heart say, amen.
this time, my brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to get ready to commune together. Uh, because of this pandemic and what we're going through, many folks may not have uh, the elements that we normally use for communion, the cracker, uh, the bread, or the wine, or the, the grape juice, but I want to encourage you to use whatever you have. Remember, communion is symbolic. The bread represents Christ's body. The juice or the wine represents the blood of Jesus. So whatever you need to get, go and get that now as we continue in this communion service today. I will cling to the The Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth regarding the Lord's Supper, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord that which also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity to come to the table one more time. We pray even now, Lord, that you'll take these natural elements and turn them so that they might have a spiritual use. Thank you for the bread that represents your body. Thank you for the wine that represents your blood. We pray even now, Lord, that you'll allow this to be an opportunity for us to come and do some self-reflection, take self-inventory look at ourselves to see where we are with respect to you and where you desire for us to be. Thank you for what you did for us on Calvary. Thank you for how you suffer, bled, and died that we might have a right to a tree of life. God, we pray these blessings in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, amen. On that evening, Jesus took the bread and after he had broken the bread, he blessed it said, this is my body, broken for many. Take it, eat all of it. After they ate together, he took the wine and said, this is my blood, which is shed for many. Take it, drink ye all of it. After they ate and they drank together, the Bible says that they went out into the Mount of Olives and they went singing a hymn, and we don't know what hymn they sung, but what we do know is that we have been redeemed, bought with a price by the blood of the Lamb. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Welcome to the St. John's Baptist Church online giving in one minute demo. If you already have a Simple Give account, be sure to log in with your account information to store your giving in your account history. 
Let's get started and head over to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org. Once you are on the landing page, you will select the Giving tab from the information bar. From here, you will be taken to our Simple Give page. Once on Simple Give, you will select the fund to which you wish to give, such as tithes, benevolence, or other. Next, you will enter the gift amount you wish to give. Lastly, please enter your information and press the Submit tab. Once submitted, you will receive immediate confirmation of your gift. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr., and the St. John's family, we thank you for your gift and pray God's blessings for you and your family.